Welcome to our presentation about the MBS Sojo plugins. My name is Christian Schmitz and I'd like to show you what's new in MBS plugins. We are making Sojo plugins since 2001, so it's been 20 years so far. And this is a full-time job, because making plugins as a hobby doesn't really work. Our plugins are a huge toolbox with a lot of functionality for you and you should check out what's possible. And we enable more possible applications in Sojo, things you may not do with Sojo alone, but you may need a plugin to do so. So, since 2001 we got a collection of 45 plugins built from 520 plugin parts, 73,000 items are in the documentation and we currently have 2,800 classes. And with 2,100 example projects it may be worth to just click through a few of them, find some interesting code examples and then copy and paste that to, that to your projects. We support a lot of Sojo versions, everything from 2006 release 4 to the most recent ones from 2021. As you see, we have to adjust our plugin from time to time to a newer Sojo version, so please stay up to date with your MBS plugins. Here's a list of a few bigger changes in Sojo, like the WebKit 2 introduction in 2020, then later the iOS plugins and support for Apple Silicon, and recently in 2021, release 1, there was a change for the iOS simulator also using ARM64 code. And we had to adjust the plugins, so older plugins may no longer work and you have to use the latest one to get all those changes from us too. Today I don't like to show you everything, that's too much, but let's look what changed since the last conference about a year ago. We have ongoing development, like we keep the open source libraries up to date, so if there's a bug fix in one of our many open source libraries used, we integrate that in the plugins and you benefit from the bug fixes without maybe knowing that there was a bug. We regularly change the SDK functions we use, like functions get deprecated by Sojo Inc. and then we have to move to newer functions. We also update the SDKs for Mac, Windows and Linux, so we use newer functions under the hood and you may not notice it. We have to follow the changes Sojo makes for API 2, like we have over 200 places where we use date class and we changed it to allow you to also use date time in most cases. So you can use either the old version with date or the newer methods with date time. We also added code to use row set class instead of record set, but with the current plugin you can use both. It's always your decision what to use, and for us it doesn't really matter, because, well, we, we can do both. We also have to follow interface changes, so if we use a Sojo class and it changes its declaration, adds a new method or so, we have to follow and make sure that our plugin is compatible. Recently, Sojo added support for Apple Silicon and we compiled all our plugins with Apple Silicon support, so we now build MacOS Universal Binaries. Still, for the inter version, there is MacOS 10.9 as a minimum and you can use any MacOS version since 2013 for using our plugins. If you want to know if the current architecture is ARM, you can check the system information, MBS, 
method there called isarm and it will return true if the current CPU is ARM. And if you want to know if you are running under Rosetta with an Intel application, you can use the isTranslated function. Next, we have SeedKit functions for MacOS to use the 3D engine coming with the MacOS operation system. And there we added hit testing, so you can know what's below your mouse coordinate. We also got the physical world classes, which allow you to do things like gravity, hit testing, and various shapes. So you can do your animations and get physical reactions when objects hit each other. And Stephanie made a nice presentation about all those classes, and you may want to watch that video too. If you like to access Photos database on MacOS, you can use our Photos Framework classes. We got 37 classes for that. And you can work with assets, collections, and projects. And if you like, you can also sh show live photos with our control for that. So you can play back the live photo on your window. Our classes use a lot of delegates, so you can react to uh, operations being completed by providing your own callback method, which is then called when something is finished or progress is made, and you can update your user interface. In general, this requires MacOS 10.13, but some features are new in 10.15. And your application needs to have the usage strings in the info P list and be code signed with entitlements to be allowed to, co to access the photos library. Here's a sample screenshot where we show you a live picture and it shows the little button on the bottom left where you can start the video manually if you like, otherwise it should normally autoplay if you decide to configure it that way. A few customers use SAP for their bigger companies, and we have classes to connect to SAP applications and databases directly from your Soldier application. You can do remote functions calls and call well your code in SAP to pass in some parameters, get some result back, and this works on MacOS, Windows, and Linux. You need to sign up with SAP to get a login and log in to download the NetWeaver RFSC SDK. And you may also need an SAP license for access from with the RFSC connection. Then you can use our classes to load the library, query the list of available functions, their description parameters. Then you can make a call. You can pass in parameters um, with tables and structures. So a table is more like an array, two-dimensional, and structure is like a dictionary in Sojo. You can use transactions. So you can create several records and then commit them all together. And here's a sample screenshot of an example project where it connects to a default table with here airlines and queries the properties of those airlines. We got a new plugin for RabbitMQ and that's an open source messaging broker software where we wrap the open source RabbitMQC library so you can connect to your server and perform actions. We use sockets with SSL encryption so you can um, secure your connections with a certificate. You can create a queue or open existing queue. You can send messages to the queue and also listen for new messages to arrive on the queue. And a lot of other operations you may need. Here's a screenshot of a sample application which can perform several actions like doing the login, opening a channel, 
publishing some data and then the other side should receive it. Last year we added IO support since Sojo 2020 R2 introduced it and currently 33 of our plugins are IOS enabled so we build the IOS libraries and include them in the download. Here are a few screenshots. We got the scene kit control, a map view control and our own web view control which you can use in your Sojo applications for IOS. We have many more classes for IOS, so please check it out. Our SQL plugin got a few upgrades. This includes our internal SQLite library. We found a way to use the Unicode libraries with it, so you can get proper handling of umlauts or Asian characters. We also enabled the JSON, the math and the geopoly functions, so you can use SQL commands which directly work on JSON for example or you can make this query for geopoly functions where you can look up records within a distance to a certain uh, coordinate for example. And on a nice weekend we added support for Duck DB database which is similar to SQLite but a different, um, different project. And it uses column based storage instead of row based. So, for certain operations, it can be much faster than a row based database. We also got code to do edit, update, and delete for SQL database class. So, if you want to edit a record set directly, you can try that. And since Sojo implemented the row set class, we also offer this for our SQL plugin. So it's your decision whether you use record set or row set and our plugin does both. Then we implemented a class for Windows spell checking. You can query the available languages, then you can initialize with a language you like and check text for errors. You get back error objects. You can learn words, of course. You can put words on the ignore list and you can of course make your own user interface to highlight the errors. And for the text error control in Sojo you can already enable spell checking yourself if you like and we also have an example for that with our plugin. Then we have the JavaScript engine class which allows you to run JavaScript without a HTML viewer and we recently added modules support so you can initialize that and register a few models and then use the require statement in SQLite to activate a model. And if you look for a nice example, we have the lib phone number example. And this one loads a JavaScript library to format international phone numbers. And it's, it's written in JavaScript. We can load it, we can run it with input from um, Sojo and then get the result back. So a very nice example showing how to integrate some JavaScript library. Next thing is Shard Director 7, a new version of the Shard Director library. It supports new things like tree map shards, discrete heat maps, circular bar meters, multi-page PDF output, huge data set support, high DPI support, and it comes with 17 new example projects to show you all the new features. We also got a class for viewport control. And here's a screenshot from the example project called real-time viewport example. In this example, that data comes in in a thread, is pushed onto a queue, then it's added to the chart. You see the bottom and the top chart growing. You can select a range to show in the top chart or you can live follow the new data coming in. Here's another example chart for a contour chart with a circular mask to hide all the values we don't want to see. Then we have a tree map chart with colors. And here are 
several surface charts with new color options. You see we can color based on the high, color based on some Z value or based on X and Y axis. Here's a surface projection chart which not just shows it in 3D but also projected to the bottom so you can see which coordinates the value have. And here's another wafer map demonstration example showing you data points from sectors on a circle plate. And this may be useful for a few of you. As you may know, we got big number class, our floating point number with 640 bits, and it has a quite high precision, but that's not enough, so we got bigger number. And this is a floating point number with 2560 bits, enough for a precision of about 600 digits. And if that's not enough, we also have large number MBS, which is our integer with over 4000 bits, enough for 1200 digits. And we have an example to use that for our currency replacement with our big currency class. So you can get more precision for your um, currency calculations. Then we got the NSNet service classes that allows you to use Bonjour services on macOS and iOS. You can browse for available domains and services. You can publish a service. You can work with the text record data. It parses the IP44 and IP46 addresses for you if you resolve a service. And you can, of course, also encode the text record data. And if you ask why you want to use that, well, if you have a macOS application and a companion iOS app, and they should find each other in the local network, this is the way to find each other. So the macOS application could publish a service and the iOS app could find it. We implemented NS Collection View for Sojo for macOS. It allows you to use container controls as items and you get a smooth scrolling. And since it uses a data source interface, you can use a, it with a thousand items and only create the container controls needed for the current view. And it has very smooth scrolling and we really enjoy it as it's the first way to get something like a grid control in Sojo. Next, we started to write another grid-like control. So we have a container control using, well, container controls for the items again, and an NS scroll view on macOS to get smooth scrolling. And for Windows, we use a regular scroll bar. So we can scroll all the items and, well, make our own list of items based on container controls. Then we got data detectors. That is the NS data detector class and it's the same code used by Apple for Safari or Mail to identify interesting data in, in your text. It's for macOS only and it can find phone numbers, times and dates, addresses and URLs and emails. And on the right you see a screen where we run our example application and highlight all the data points we found in, in the text. If you like to use the standard text finder interface for macros in your Sojo applications, you can use that with our NS text finder class. And you can use it with a text area control or NS text view control. So you can show the standard find interface and you can even allow people to search and replace within your texts. 
We got a few changes for curl, besides updating regularly to the newer versions, adding new options and properties. We also enabled the security support provider interface on Windows, KBOS 5, and so people using enterprise software can do the authentication via those interfaces. We also got a solution for international domain names for macOS, Windows and Linux. So we have different code for different platforms. On macOS we let the system do the resolve as well as on Windows and on Linux we can load the libedn library to do the resolving of the international domain names. Also our debug logs now show the version numbers of curl and the MBS plugins so we can better help you with your support requests. Then we got WebView 2. This is a control from Microsoft to allow you to host a, a browser window in your own application, like the HTML viewer in Sojo, but it's based on the Chrome Edge engine, so what Microsoft forked from the Chrome project and made their own browser from, we can use that as a control in Sojo. Of course, you can do a lot of things like running JavaScript and we have a couple of events for Sojo so you can be, get notified if the page loaded successfully or your JavaScript turned a value back to Sojo. Next, we got an SSH terminal example for our SSH classes. And it's just an example to show you how to implement an interactive terminal where you can enter commands and then see the output in the window. For DynaPDF, we also got a few improvements over the year. So white F text can now have commands to have links inside. So you can have it output text over several pages and highlight some words with clickable links. And wherever those words are outputted, DynaPDF will automatically create the link annotation for you. Also, we got code to convert style text from Sojo into the DynaPDF format and draw it directly on a page, as you see on the right. And our optimize command got a new trick to convert all the content of a PDF into a different color space, for example, to CMBK. We improved our graphics class integration, so you can use the graphics class to draw on DynaPDF's PDF pages. We have now the option to raise exceptions for errors if you don't implement our error event to handle them. We got support for ZugFiat 2.1 and Factor X for invoices with embedded XML documents. And with the in the barcode function, we got a way to create barcodes on your PDF documents as vector graphics directly in DynaPDF. Then we got new classes for declares. So we have declare library, a class which allows you to load a C library on Windows or DRL, on Mac or Dialib, and a shared object on Linux. You can load it, you can get a list of the methods defined in the C library. You can get a list of the functions defined in the C library. Then you can load an individual function with our declare function class and make a call to a C functions and pass all the parameters needed and get back the result returned from the C function. We also have a declare callback class, which allows you to create a function for a callback. And this even allows you to get thread safe callbacks. So you can call a C function, pass in the pointer for your callback and later receive the callback in your Sojo application. Then we have the Win Photo Acquire framework implemented in Windows. And we made a few classes for that. So you can use them to pick a device, list the pictures on your camera and import them. And you can decide whether you run this with the standard dialogs or without. And here you see the dialog to pick a device 
and you see the settings dialog. Then we have support for the Windows App Store. So you can sell your apps in the Windows App Store. You can offer trial applications and check the status with our plugin. And you can query the product list and then offer an in-app purchase to, well, make a transaction and then unlock the new features in your application once paid. For our users using FileMaker as a database server, we got new classes to connect to our Claris FileMaker server. And we support the data API for working with the data and the admin API for actually controlling the database server, like closing and opening databases. So you can do a login, you can go and find some records, download them to Sojo, process them, and maybe also create and edit records. So you can have a Sojo web app, collect some data, push it to the FileMaker server, and also you can upload files to container fields in FileMaker. Yeah, and control everything if you like. And the future, what will we do in the next months? We'll see, but uh, currently on the plate is getting things built for Linux 64-bit for ARM because Sojo announced they will do that eventually. And as of today, all the plugins are already compiled for ARM 64-bit, but of course we have no way to actually try them without a matching Sojo version. Then we have Tesseract 4 on our list because the OCR classes we have are still based on the version 3 and we are trying to move them to the version 4 to benefit from the enhancements coming with the newer versions. Then we know that uh, our Xing classes for barcode recognition are a little bit outdated and don't recognize all the barcodes you have. So we also will implement something uh, with the setbar library. And next week we will watch what Apple provides with the Worldwide Developer Conference to get new ideas. And also, since we implemented the WebView 2 control for Windows, um, that was really enjoyable endeavor. We may look into similar controls uh, offered by Microsoft and add them to Sergio. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us via email or in the forums. And if you have any ideas, please pass them on and we'll see you all in the next conference, probably in spring in London. See you. Thanks for watching.